Have you ever wondered what all goes into making a YouTube video? Well, you're in the right place. Today I thought it might be fun to walk you through my video making process and give you an in-depth look at each and every aspect or product that goes into making my content. Now if you're interested in checking any of these out for yourself, I'll have product links in the description below, but let's get started. So the first and probably most important part of what I use to make my videos is what I'm filming on right now. My camera is my iPhone 15 Pro Max. So obviously I can't show you what I'm filming on. I'll have some B-roll playing of it. Normally my phone would be right here on my tripod, which I use obviously to film the main part of my set. And I use what's called continuity camera via my Mac here. So basically that just means that I can have a wireless connection between my Mac and my phone. And all of the footage that I film goes directly to my Mac, even though I'm recording for my phone. It's just one of Apple's nice continuity features. It makes it a lot easier to film and especially to edit because I don't have to transfer files from my phone to my Mac. Now sometimes if I'm getting footage of my phone, like if I'm holding something or showing an app, I will use my wife's iPhone 15 Pro. That's a very frequently used item as well, so shout out to her for letting me use it. But like I said before, my phone is usually mounted to this tripod, which believe it or not, I've actually had for the past like 10 or 11 years. This was a gift to me when I was, I'd say about 12 years old from my parents, and I used to use it to make skit videos with my siblings back in the day. So around like 2011-ish when I got this, it was like $50, it's pretty nice, and I have a lot of memories with this thing. I actually didn't realize how long I've had it until I started making this video, and I'm actually pretty surprised at how surprisingly well this thing is held up. There's no really damage to it, it all works well, and it's treated me well over the years. In case you're curious, this is labeled as the S-Pod 203AP. And as you probably saw before, on the top of this tripod is a metal phone tripod mount. Basically, this just holds my phone securely in place as I'm filming. I used to use the little plastic ones like you would get basically with a selfie stick, but they are very fragile. They kept breaking. And this metal one has been a very nice upgrade because it actually screws down into place. It holds it a lot more securely. And since the tripods do fall from time to time, there's no risk of it breaking. And speaking of tripods, the only other camera mount I have is this overhead camera mount which is here behind the monitor in my desk right now. Basically, this has been a great tool for me to use, especially to record my ASMR unboxing shorts. Basically, anytime I need an overhead shot for a short or for a full video, this is what I use. Now, the reason it's here in the office is because my wife actually uses this as well, more frequently than I do, for her gaming videos. Basically, just to use her camera as a face cam. So it works very well for that too. And as you can see here, it just clips right onto the desk so that it's not taking up any floor space and it can swivel basically however you need it to, left, right, up or down. And obviously on the top here, you can see, I do have one of the plastic phone mounts as well because this one does not fall since it's clipped to the desk. Now, as far as audio goes for my videos, you may have seen it on my shirt already. What I use is the Rode SmartLav Plus lavalier microphone. Basically, this just plugs in directly to my computer or to my iPhone with an adapter. This thing has surprisingly good audio, and since it's so small, it makes it a lot easier for me to take it with me on the go, or just when I'm filming and going between different rooms or different sets, it's a lot easier to use than bringing a large microphone and hauling it around. And again, I actually do use this with continuity camera as well. So this microphone just plugs directly into my MacBook right here which again allows me to film and get audio at the same time and it all films directly onto my Mac. Now if I'm filming a YouTube short vertically instead of the normal horizontal video, I do set up the audio a little bit differently. So when I'm filming shorts, I record it directly onto my iPhone instead of using continuity camera because continuity camera doesn't really work for vertical video. Plus doing it this way does allow me to get 4K footage instead of 1080p. However, since I'm filming from my iPhone directly, that does mean that this, three. 3.5 millimeter jack does not have the ability to plug in directly to my iPhone. So what I use is an adapter, which is Apple's 3.5 millimeter to USB-C adapter. That way I can plug this into the microphone and then plug directly into my phone and still get the great audio, even if I'm going handheld or using the overhead tripod doing a YouTube short. Okay, let me put this back how it was. And that's really just about it for audio and video. So now let's move on to lighting. The main lighting source, if I'm not using the natural daylight during the day are these softbox lights. I had a set of two of these lights back when I first started making YouTube videos, 
which was like November of last year. I got them on Amazon for about $50 for the set, which is a pretty good price because they've treated me very well. The brand is called UB Size. Now, unfortunately, I did end up breaking one just the other day. I was actually filming and I ended up breaking off part of the cord. So unfortunately that means I am down to just this one. I usually only end up using one anyway, but if I'm doing something, especially at nighttime, that does require more light, usually with my unboxing videos, having just one light is unfortunate. Now, quick side note, I haven't really had a chance to review them yet, so I won't talk much about it, but I did just get a new set of LED panel lights that are supposed to accomplish the same goal. Now, this one was a set of two, again, also from Amazon. I got them on Black Friday, and they are pretty bright from what I've seen so far. Another nice feature is that it is USB enabled, which means I can actually power this from a battery pack and not even have to plug it into the wall. But I will update you on these ones maybe next year if I do this type of video again. Back to my regular softbox lights, they did come with some pretty big 60 watt LED bulbs, however I did change those out. If we actually open this up and take a look inside of the light, you'll see that it actually has a wise bulb color. So the reason that I chose the wise bulb color is because even though the light bulb that came with these lights was pretty bright, it just wasn't very versatile. I use these lights for all sorts of different purposes. Mainly it's just on daylight around 5000 Kelvin. However, sometimes I do like to get some color out of them. So using this light bulb gives me the ability to have not only very solid colors for daytime accuracy, but also some pretty solid RGB colors as well in case I ever need it for a fill light or any sort of purposes like shining on the wall behind me. And speaking of those RGB lights that I shine on the walls, these are actually different lights that I also purchased at the same time as I got the soft boxes and these are little LED sunset camera lights so I use these all the time almost in every video and what's nice about them is that they're battery powered so as you can see they recharge via USB-C right here and the battery life on these is pretty good I can use them for hours worth of recording and not have them turn off and as you can see here at the bottom there's actually a little key that lets you know what number to set it to in order to achieve whatever color you want so adjusting this light is very easy as well to change the color and the brightness. Basically there's these little knobs on the corner that allow you to adjust the brightness and the color. So I'll show you here if I move this you see the color on the little LED screen goes up and the color that's shining on the wall does change slowly and it goes through the full rainbow. And these are sunset lights which does work very well for shining on the background in my videos just because it gives you not only the blue color but also some dynamic coloring on the rims of the light. What's cool about these two is they do have different options as well. So if you press the power button, you not only have colors, but you do have the ability to set it to different scenes as well. So if I filter through these scenes, it gives you different options like birthday mode, there's a little cake, there's strobe lights, and basically just all sorts of different lighting modes that you can go through. So if you're looking for something like paparazzi camera flashing for a video that you're creating, this gives you the ability to do it very easily. And you do also have a full range of white coloring as well, basically from warm to cool white. I don't usually use it for that since I just use the colors, but it is nice that it's an option. Lastly for lighting is actually a newer addition as well, which is this LED and RGB corner lamp. So this light is actually from Timu, and it basically does a similar function to a light that I've always wanted, which is by Govi. Basically, it just shines an LED light strip onto the wall to give you that very cool and dynamic glow. Now, I will say that ordering this from Timu might be a little bit risky because when I originally purchased this, it actually arrived broken. So it has a metal frame that you assemble, which was perfectly intact and that worked just fine. What the issue was is that there's a light strip on the inside that you have to install yourself. The light strip that came with it was broken upon delivery, so I was unfortunately not able to use it. Luckily, I actually already had a different light strip from Timu on a video that I worked on previously, which I put in there and it's been working great. So I lucked out 
out, but that is something to consider. You probably won't get a broken one if you order from a name brand like Govi. Next up, I wanna go into the desk, the computer, and the accessories that I use. So firstly, for the desk, I have the 55 inch SHW electric standing desk. I actually did a full review video on this already, which will be up in the cards if you wanna check it out. But quick recap, it has a very large desk surface, as you can tell, which just gives me a lot of room to work and sprawl out some items if I'm doing a review. And again, it's a standing desk. So right here you have some motorized controls to raise or lower the desk. And you do have the ability to do presets as well. So if I set this to two, that's my standing mode and I can stand and work. So on top of the desk, you're gonna find my main piece of hardware, which is a refurbished M1 MacBook Air. And I actually switched to Mac pretty shortly after I started making videos for this channel, and I absolutely love it. This thing is very capable. It's able to edit 4K footage in real time with virtually no lagging, which has been very nice. Now, one thing I'd say as a warning is make sure you get enough storage if you end up getting a Mac, or really that goes for any computer, because I ended up getting the lowest amount of storage for this, 256 gigabytes, which in hindsight doesn't make any sense, but I didn't know back when I started this channel how large files file sizes are when you make videos like this, especially in 4K, they're gigabytes large. So the computer is perfect for me, but I would definitely make sure to get a larger internal storage next time. So what I ended up doing is getting a one terabyte micro SD card that I now store all of my footage on when editing. Now this thing has been great. It's from a brand that's called SP which I had never heard of before, but it had very good reviews on Amazon, so I went for it. And I have not had a single issue with it. It has a very good transfer speed, which is especially important because I edit directly from the SD card, so transfer speed is important. Again, there hasn't been any lagging, so it works very well. Now, to connect the SD card, what I ended up getting is a micro USB adapter from Anchor. The reason I need this is because the MacBook Air does not have an SD card slot, unfortunately. It only has two USB ports which I would say is another downside to this computer. But that being said, this little adapter has done very well for me. It has a very high transfer speed again. I think this one goes up to five gigabytes. But basically this just gives me the ability to plug in the micro SD card to my Mac without any issues. But since my Mac only has the two USB-C ports, what I ended up doing is getting a USB-C hub from Anchor as well. Now this one does have a lot more options. So not only does it give me a USB-C port for charging and for transferring files. It also gives me the two USB-A 3.0 ports, which can be used for things like an Elgato, which my wife uses. And in case you ever need it, it also has an HDMI port. To be honest, I have not used that. But again, having only two USB-C ports on my MacBook has been a pretty big downside. So it's nice to have this to open up my possibilities. So I usually just have my SD card reader plugged into one port, and then I plug in my hub to the second port that does use up all my USB-C but it gives me again a full hub of abilities to charge transfer or plug things in if I need to lastly for my desk are some old-school writing utensils which is just a notebook and a pen I just recently started using this journal and it's honestly been really nice and really refreshing to get a more tactile experience when writing things down as opposed to using a mouse and keyboard all the time so I got this notebook from Target recently it's made of faux leather and it's just the right size size for me to have a good enough writing surface, but also to take it with me if I'm on the go and not have it take up too much space in a bag. And at Target, I did also end up getting my favorite writing utensil, which is the Pilot G2 pens. And I use this notebook for pretty much everything, whether it's journaling, planning out videos, letting my kids draw in it, or even making to-do lists. This has been very handy and very nice to have, again, a tactile writing experience when I get tired of using the MacBook to write everything down. And side note, I actually have been thinking about changing out my G2 pens for a titanium pen. Hopefully that would accommodate the ink cartridges that go into these pens. So if you're familiar with titanium pens and you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. Lastly, let's hop back onto the MacBook so I can show you what softwares I use. So once everything is finalized, I do use Final Cut Pro to edit all my videos. This is another great reason to have a MacBook because I love Apple's editing software. Now, when I originally started this channel, I actually used HitFilm Pro. Pro, this is a free video editing software for a very long time. I was already familiar with HitFilm from previous videos and channels that I've made, so I've been using that for a few years. But since HitFilm is a lot more limited and definitely more time consuming, I did end up making the change to Final Cut Pro. It took me a while to decide to do it. It was a very daunting task to learn a whole new editing 
platform. And I definitely would say at first it was very hard to get used to. However, over time, as with anything, you get used to it. And I do love Final Cut Pro now. It gives me a lot more smooth of an editing process and makes things a lot quicker because of all the features that it has. Now, luckily, Apple actually does have a trial for Final Cut Pro, which I will have linked in the description. They actually give you 90 days for free. Unfortunately for me, the trial's expiring in one day, so I will have to end up buying it. But again, I think it'll definitely be worth it based on the experience that I've had. Now, as far as pre-production goes on my videos, the platform that I use for writing my scripts and just jotting down all of my ideas is Notion. So this is a platform that I hadn't heard of before, but I found it through a Ryan Trahan video and I've been loving using it. What I used when I originally started my channel was just the built-in notes app on my iPhone and my Mac, but compared to Notion, the Notes app is extremely clunky and hard to use. You have no way to format your text, make good lists like this, or basically any way to plan or map things out for the future. So once I found Notion, I have not made the change back. And actually the best part is that it's free. They do have paid memberships if you're interested in them, but for my purposes, I've been able to use the free plan and it works amazing. So for example, you can take a look at the script that I made for this video. Basically, I write down the different sections of the video, like the intro, I make each text check mark so that whenever I'm done saying it, I can check it off and see the next thing. And then obviously I map everything out so I know exactly what I want to go into for my videos. Now at the bottom here, I do also put affiliate links or any links that I intend to put in the description of my videos and things like timestamps or different references I use for the videos. I do also have a subscription to Epidemic Sound. This is what I use to basically get all of the audio that I need for my videos, mainly for background music and a lot of times for sound effects. I used to exclusively use all of the free stuff that was on YouTube Studio, but again, after finding Epidemic Sound and subscribing to it, I've just found that the quality of their music especially is a lot higher quality than what you can find on YouTube or from free platforms online. Okay, and the last platform that I use is called Canva. So this is what I use to make all of my thumbnails for YouTube. I am not trained in Photoshop at all, which I know a lot of people use to make thumbnails, but for me, Canva has been perfect because it gives me all all of this software that I need to be able to make the thumbnails that I want. Whether it's cutting myself out from a background, grabbing different elements, or really anything you might need to edit a photo, Canva will have it and it's a great and easy way to do it. So that just about does it. Again, I'll have affiliate links in the description if you're interested in checking out any of these products or softwares that I use. And if you are interested in seeing any more content like this in the future, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you here. By the way, if you're looking to binge my channel and you want somewhere to start, this is another great video that I think you'll love. Thank you so much for watching.